Three kids from Brooklyn founded Starbucks. Starbucks was founded by Jerry Baldwin, Zev Siegel, and Gordon Bowker on the 30th of March, 1971. Let's look at the history of these three geniuses before and while they founded Starbucks. Jerry and Gordon met in a funny circumstance where they were both standing in line in their sophomore year to get their dorm apartment. Unfortunately, neither of them had signed up for it in advance or made a deposit, and it turned out all the dorms were full. Then they looked at each other and said, want to go find an apartment? According to Bowker during an interview. Zev Siegel entered the picture much later. He had a summer job at Seattle's Century 21 World's Fair in 1962, where he posted a notice on a bulletin board that he would be driving to New York via San Francisco and was looking for passengers. Interestingly, Gordon, who wanted to leave New York for Europe in the fall and needed a ride, signed up with Zev and along the line got acquainted with Jerry Baldwin. A few years later, after Jerry left the army, the three men found themselves again in Seattle where Jerry was now working at Boeing, Zev was a school teacher, and Gordon worked as a writer and editor at the original Seattle magazine. The three friends after meeting wanted to start something together and started by writing a screenplay for King's TV production company and making pre-recorded classical music broadcasts for radio. Jerry and Gordon, with the help of another entity, also made documentary films about American music, and they named their company Pequod, but the venture was not successful. One day over lunch and a bad cup of coffee, Gordon brought up the idea of the three of them opening a coffee store where well-brewed coffee can be gotten in Seattle, and the other two liked the idea, although they knew nothing about it, so they decided to do research about it, which was headed by Zev. Zev located a place with what they needed and had in mind, a gourmet coffee company in Berkeley called Pete's. Zev called the owner of Pete, Alfred Pete, who was generous enough to share information with them and later agreed to meet them. Zev immediately met with Pete in December 1970 and upon meeting grew an admiration for Pete. Later in the same month, Jerry and Gordon also met with Pete and were taken in as apprentices in Pete's shop so they could learn and observe the business. Later on, Pete agreed to supply their upcoming business with fresh roasted coffee beans. After learning about business, they found the location they wanted to use for their coffee shop, a corner storefront in the old Harbor Heights Hotel at 2000 Western Avenue, north of the Pike Place Market with a rent of $137.50. They named it Starbucks after the first mate, Starbuck, in Herman Melville's classic novel, Moby Dick. Each of the partners contributed $1,500 as startup capital and also took a bank loan of $5,000 to buy roasted coffee beans from Pete. At starting, only Zev was employed in Starbucks while Jerry and Gordon kept their daily jobs. On weekends, all three partners worked in the store. All three partners took different roles in the company based on their area of expertise. Jerry was in accounting and due to Zev's love for coffee, he was in charge of tasting and buying, and Gordon often liked to refer to himself as the background power. In the first nine months of business, Starbucks made a gross net profit of $46,832. By the second year of operation of Starbucks, Jerry had to become a full-time staff member due to the increase in customers, and the partners began searching for a location to open a second branch. They found an excellent location at the University Village Shopping Center near Gourmet Supermarket QFC. Although they didn't have enough money to get the second store due to various expenses, they were able to get loans from their friends to begin operation in the second store. Soon, Alfred Pete, owner of Pete's, where the partners got the gourmet beans they sold, called them and advised them that it was time they started roasting their coffee beans themselves. Pete helped them locate a used roaster from Holland, and Baldwin and Bowker taught Jerry Baldwin how to roast and achieve the distinct dark flavor Starbucks is known for. The store rented a funky warehouse near Fisherman's Terminal to serve as a roasting plant. Starbucks was getting really big and really busy for the partners since they began roasting the coffee beans themselves. In the following year, they hired many professionals to manage their stores. A third store was planned for Edmonds, which is located in North Seattle. The store planned at Edmonds was aimed at supplying customers with a line of gourmet cookware and as a means for expanding the business. However, this advancement crashed in 1975 when a freeze destroyed the Brazilian coffee crop, leading to a rise in price of coffee and decline in sales. Starbucks had to quit offering free samples of coffee and had to keep its income by roasting barley for another company that sold it as a substitute for coffee. Eventually, they stopped roasting barley and to make matters worse for the up-and-coming company, the Surgeon General issued a warning that consumption of coffee might increase the risk of cancer. The young company was dealt a major blow when the building that housed their major store was to be torn down. Hence, they had to move. 
However, they found an available storefront a half block south at 1912 Pike Place in the Pike Place Market where the store still operates today. With the continued hike in price of coffee, Starbucks had to take a loan of $95,000 from Rainier Bank to stay in business. In 1977, the price of coffee began to drop and Starbucks was able to finally lower retail prices. In the month of May of the same year, the company anticipated a rise in demand of coffee and Jerry Baldwin had to travel to Germany to get a bigger coffee roaster while handing over coffee purchases to Reynolds. Business picked up and in 1978, Starbucks moved its roasting plant and office to a bigger facility which was 6,000 square feet big and was located at 2010 Airport Way. In 1980, Siegel decided to pursue other interests and left the two remaining partners, with Baldwin assuming the role of company president. The real turning point arrived for the company during the entry of Howard Schultz. In 1981, Howard Schultz, a sales representative for Hammerplast, a Swedish company that made kitchen equipment and housewares from which Starbucks bought drip coffee makers, noticed how large the company's orders were, which prompted him to pay it a visit. Schultz was so impressed that he decided to pursue a career at Starbucks, and he was hired as the head of marketing in 1982. Schultz noticed that first-time customers sometimes felt uneasy in the stores, so he worked with store employees on developing customer-friendly sales skills. Schultz's biggest idea for the future of Starbucks came during the spring of 1983, when the company sent him to Milan to attend an international houseware show. While in Italy, he was impressed with the country's cafes and discovered that Milan alone boasted 1,500 coffee houses. Inspired, he thought of doing something similar in Starbucks. However, Jerry and Gordon were not happy about Schultz's idea, as they did not want Starbucks to deviate too much from its traditional model of business. They wanted Starbucks to remain strictly a coffee and equipment seller and not turn into a cafe that served espressos and cappuccinos. Seeing that he would not be able to persuade Baldwin and Bowker to embrace the cafe idea, Schultz left Starbucks in 1985 and started his own coffee chain called Il Journal, which was an immediate success, quickly expanding into multiple cities. In March 1987, Jerry and Gordon decided to sell Starbucks, and Schultz was quick to use Il Journal to purchase the company with investor backing. He combined all his operations under the Starbucks brand and committed to the cafe concept for the business, with additional sales of beans, equipment, and other items in Starbucks stores. Under Schultz's guidance, in four years, the coffeehouse chain grew from fewer than 20 stores to more than 100. By the end of the decade, Starbucks had some 2,500 locations in about a dozen countries. Today, Starbucks is the world's largest coffeehouse chain with over 33,833 stores in 84 countries across the world. With estimated net worth of $52 billion and net profit from sales of $4.2 billion a year. Thanks for watching the video as this was the story of Starbucks. Stay tuned to more videos like this by pressing the subscribe and like buttons. Also, you can ask to make a video on your favorite topic.